Hello everyone, Tutu Mora here with The Why, bringing you tools to feel well in your body, mind, and spirit. Today, we are gonna be focusing on some posture, but specifically around the context of our head forward and a little bit of an exaggerated kyphosis that can happen through the thoracic spine. So sometimes, and I'll turn sideways so you can kind of better see, Sometimes when we're, you know, sitting a lot of the time or for various other reasons, we can start to adopt a head forward or even a little bit of a rounding through the thoracic spine here. And that can feel really uncomfortable. Posture is not just something that we want to have a good alignment because it looks good or just for the sake of having good alignment. It actually allows um, your body to be a little bit more biomechanically efficient and a lot of the systems of your body to, to function in the way that they are meant to. So restoring that alignment and the posture will not only feel better um, because of your posture, not only will you feel taller, you'll feel longer and more at ease, but everything in your body is going to be able to work a little bit better as a result. So if this is kind of where you spend most of your time, some of the exercises that we're going to do here today might feel a little different and might feel a little funky because that's not what you normally do or it's not where you spend most of your time, especially if this is a, as if this is a posture that you spend like, you know, the majority of your day in, anything different is going to feel weird and anything different is going to feel weird. So we get to kind of ride in that weird space and practice feeling a little more comfortable and stronger in what will feel like a weird posture so that that starts to become a place that you are able to spend more time in or come back to during the day. So the first thing we want to think about is we kind of receive a cue a lot to bring your head back in space or tuck your chin a little bit. So let's kind of unpack what that means because sometimes when we're here, tucking the chin is just gonna bring us here, which isn't what we want either. Bringing your head back is, might mean smashing your chin in towards your neck, which isn't what we want either. So what I want you to think about, and I'll just pull this back too so you can better see my alignment and my neck. If we're here, if you bring a hand in front of your face, you can think about just gently tracking your jaw back as if you're avoiding your hand. So it's not just smashing your chin back. We get to think about this whole space, like it's on little train tracks and it's just gently tracking back in space. So it's just sitting on top of your spine. So maybe even practicing that a couple times. And this is one of those things that's sometimes helpful to practice in a mirror. And I know it's tricky to kind of see yourself from the side, but to notice, am I really just cramming myself back here or does it feel like I'm allowing a little bit of a smooth track back? Because it shouldn't feel like we're tensing anything to get back here. So this is something that you get to practice in the context of what we're doing. So I'll turn forward again. We're gonna do a couple things here. Some of the things will be laying down. Some of the things will be standing. The invitation is to do it against a wall, which I've got behind me just for some feedback. Um, and you can choose what you've got to work with and what feels most comfortable. We may use a foam roller here today. That might be part two, but we'll kind of see what we've got time for today. So the first thing that I want you to do is standing, and I'll do this standing in a moment, but find your posture, find your alignment where you can stand in a way that you have a nice even balance of weight across your feet. Your rib cage is sitting over your pelvis, so you're not, you know, forward with your rib cage, forward from your pelvis or behind your pelvis. Things are stacked one on top of the other, and then your head gets to be stacked as well. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by this. So I'll stand back here and turning to the side so you can see my alignment. If our rib cage is forward of our pelvis, we're here. This isn't something that we necessarily want to strengthen as long as it feels comfortable to bring that rib cage back on top of your pelvis. We also don't want the pelvis to be forward from the rib cage. We're squeezing the butt cheeks, perhaps tucking the tail. We also don't want this 
So what might it feel like for you to stand evenly across your feet and feel your pelvis, your rib cage, and your head just sitting one on top of the other, just stacked. And you can even think about this against a wall. So if you were to step a couple steps back from the wall and you get to align your pelvis, the back of your rib cage, and your head against the wall, what does that feel like? And especially if you live a lot of time with the head forward posture, it might be tricky to connect your head to the back of the wall. But see if you can start with your pelvis and one of the two others. So whether that is your uh, your chest, so kind of the back of the rib cage, or maybe that is the base of your skull. But see what feels possible for you. And then let's bring the arms forward in space and see if you can keep your alignment here as you bring your arms forward. We're going to bend at the elbows and we're going to open the arms out to the side. Now, one of several things might want to happen here. So you could remain nice and steady with your spine evenly against the wall. Now, when we say that our spine is against the wall, our spine isn't flat against the wall. It has its natural curvature, but you still feel those landmarks of the back of your pelvis, the back of your rib cage, the base of your skull. As you open your arms out and you draw them back in. So let's take this a couple times, noticing that if your back is against the wall, as you bring your arms out, is your head wanting to come forward? Is your rib cage wanting to pop forward? So you get to be mindful of what does my body want to do as I just take this movement. We're going to take this a few times. Let's make sure that we're breathing and we're not forcing anything back. We are just finding the range that feels natural while you allow yourself to be mindful of what's happening with the rest of your body. Now let's hold the next one out. So, Ideally, you get to feel your elbows against the wall. You get to feel your wrists against the wall. And we're not, you know, compromising the organization that you've got through your spine, through your trunk. We have the natural curvature of your spine with your bony landmarks. And without lifting the shoulders while we do this, we're just going to slide one arm up the wall and bring it back down. Other side. And we get to keep our bony landmarks. So elbows and wrists get to stay with the wall as we're moving. And that doesn't mean that we're really contorting our body in order to make that happen. If our elbows are lifted, if our wrists are lifted, if that's a place where we want to start while we keep our spine stable, start there. Let this be the first thing that you think about because the arms are just challenging that. They're just challenging that organization of your spine. Let's take a couple more. Last set. And then go ahead and bring those arms back in, rest them down to your sides, and just feel those bony landmarks against the wall. So now, as you step away from the wall, let's take this to the mat, and we're going to kind of remember the organization or what it felt like to organize your spine against the wall. We're going to lay down on our stomach. You can make a little pillow out of your hands for your head and breathe for a minute. Just notice how your body is resting on the mat. What moments or what bony landmarks are you feeling as your body is resting on the mat? And as you're breathing, just allowing yourself to relax into this position. Now let's lift your head from your hands. It's just hovering because it's staying in line with your spine. And let's breathe with this. Hands can be to the sides, wherever they feel comfortable. We're just breathing 
while we feel that lift from the back of the neck, the upper back, but it's not like we're lifting the whole face up. We're just lifting so that we're not resting the head down on the mat. And then go ahead and rest. Rest your forehead down. Feel the back of your neck lengthen. And once again, lift up and just hold your head in line with your spine. And again, we're lifting. It isn't and it doesn't need to be the most complicated thing in the world. We're just holding your head in alignment with your spine. Now let's challenge this because if this feels very easy, we get to build from here. If this feels like a lot of work, let yourself practice this. Take breaks in your day to practice placing your spine in alignment and strengthening those muscles that help you keep your spine in alignment. So our head is lifted. It's hovering. It's in a nice alignment with the spine. And let's bring the arms out into a T. So like you're just flying over the floor. And just breathe. You can feel a little activity between your shoulder blades as if they just are magnetically attracted to each other across your upper back. And we're breathing. Now let's lift the arms a little bit, but the spine is gonna stay where it is. You can feel the shoulder blades gently magnetized towards each other. So they're reaching gently towards each other, and then we get to release that as they come back down to the starting point. And let's take that again. This does not need to be very big. We are just working some of those upper back muscles. Make sure you're still breathing. And then rest. Bring your hands down to the mat, rest your head. Take a deep breath. Let's once again, lift that head from the mat. It's just in alignment with your spine. Let's reach those arms out. This time, as we lift the arms, let's lift the heart as if you're just lifting your sternum from the mat. And then go ahead and lower just your sternum, but you're gonna keep your arms lifted. Lifting that sternum and lowering down. Lifting the sternum and lowering down. Now let's lift the sternum and the arms, arms lift a little more. Keep those arms lifted as you lower that sternum back down. And remember the lift of the arms gets to happen through the shoulder blades. One more, let's lift those arms even more. Mobilize those shoulder blades. They're magnetized towards each other. And we lift through the sternum and lower back down. Two more. This isn't happening through the upper shoulders. Those upper traps are relaxed. Go ahead and relax everything back down. Rest your head on the mat and breathe. Now go ahead and let's come on up. If you've got a roller handy, Let's grab that roller. We're gonna do a couple things with the roller before we end this part one. Okay, so I'm using a pretty cushy roller here, but if you've got a very firm roller, um, so see mine is very malleable, then you can uh, just roll up a bath towel and you can use that as well. So one of the things that we can do with the roller here um, and there are many things, but we'll just do one here today. Let's go ahead and hop aboard the roller from your tailbone all the way to the crown of your head. We want that to feel supported by that foam roller. And just take a moment to breathe, and you're naturally gonna feel those bony landmarks that you noticed against the wall. 
And we're gonna do something similar here that we did standing, that we did on your stomach, now we're doing it on your back. So we're breathing and we feel the alignment. Let's bring those arms up. And let's bend at the elbow. We're gonna open those arms out to the side. And we're not popping the rib cage in order to make this happen. We're gonna straighten those arms up and we're gonna bring them up to the center. We're gonna bend at the elbow, opening back. And feeling that nice stretch, if you want to rest your hands behind you on the floor as you just breathe, that's totally welcome. Extending, coming back up through the center. And again. Really noticing what happens as we take it back from here. Because as we open up and back, sometimes we naturally want this to lift up towards the ceiling, especially if we're feeling pretty tight through the chest. So as you're here, don't be afraid to rest back and breathe. Don't be afraid to breathe into the whole barrel of your rib cage. Extending all the way up, couple more. Resting here if you feel like you need to, sometimes that can be quite a nice stretch. Extending all the way up, one more. And then just let your arms relax at your sides. Find your breath. And stay here for as long as feels good. This can be a nice way to allow your shoulders just to kind of drape over the shape of the roller, to allow your rib cage and your chest to feel like it can just drape over the roller. If you feel like both halves of your uh, pelvis get to relax over the roller. So again, stay here for as long as you want to. But when you come off, you can roll to the side, you can remove that prop, and give yourself the opportunity to feel how your spine is resting here on the mat. Feeling the bony part of the back of your skull. So notice, where is the back of my skull resting against the mat? Letting your throat relax into the back of your neck. Feeling your shoulder blades and the back of your rib cage on the mat. Noticing the lengths of your arms and hands. Allowing your low back to relax down towards the mat. Noticing the back of your pelvis, how it's resting into the mat. And then feeling the bottoms of your feet, your heels, and the balls of your toes all resting into the mat. And noticing these checkpoints. And if you come back to this practice in the middle of the day or at any other time, come back to these checkpoints. Come back to this little tuning in to notice where is my posture at? So sometimes with a head forward posture, we notice that the head starts here and we're actually looking back behind. You can feel a different part of your head connected to the mat. You might not be able to feel your rib cage. You might feel that there is less space or more of a gap for your ribs. They're not softening. They're not feeling relaxed down into the mat. You might notice that you're pretty arched through the back or tucked through the tail. So these checkpoints, it's a helpful way to notice what my posture is like day to day. And feeling the checkpoints after your practice here to notice what's changed, what are those landmarks that I know equal a more aligned uh, posture for me without being too rigid about it because everyone is gonna be a little different and everyone's posture changes at the pace that's right for them because sometimes that can be kind of a, a, gradual, a gradual process, which it needs to be because the body changes um, 
at its own pace, which is different for everyone. So I hope you found this helpful. We'll do a part two about this, but you know, I think the invitation here is to take your time and to use the feedback of the wall, the roller, the mat to, to, be, your, to be your guide of where is my body in space and develop that sense, that body sense of proprioception. Where is my body in space? Because that is a tricky thing to develop and the, the feedback points of the mat and the roller and the wall can be really helpful so that you don't have to spend your time like focused on how you're looking like from the mirror or you can find this internal sense of, um, of body awareness and spatial awareness. So I'll plan to see you back here next time on the Wise Recharge With Us From Home series. Take good care.